Hello Scorpio friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my video, Scorpio April 2021 Astrology Must Knows. As we enter April, we're entering my second favorite month of the whole year from the astrological perspective and that has to do with the general transits, what's going on in the sky, the way the planets are connecting with one another and some other factors. My first favorite month of the whole year is March, so if you haven't watched my March report, you definitely want to watch that as well. So. There are a lot of reasons why I love this month, and we're going to talk about all of those reasons. I'm also going to share with you things to celebrate specifically for Scorpios and things to look out for specifically for Scorpios. But first, I have one quick admin note. I'm going to give you lots of details in this video, but if you want more details, click in the more and little arrow with a little arrow underneath the video to open up the notes that have all of the links of all of my free resources because I do lots of stuff each month. You want to make sure that you're taking advantage of all the things I do for you so that you can make the most with the starry for, of the starry opportunities. The first thing to do on your list is sign up for my free email newsletter at anniehelpsyou.com because not only will I give you all of the aspects to note, the sweet and salty dates, a general write-up of the month ahead, all one month early delivered into your inbox, you'll also get a sneak peek into every month of 2021 because I have exclusive for my email community what to celebrate, what to look out for, and how to make lemonade if necessary for each month of all the rest of 2021. And you'll get that when you sign up for my free email newsletter at anniehelpsyou.com. Okay, so let's talk about all of the things here that are top on my list. The first thing is that this month is another month, like March, where we have more sweet aspects than salty ones. And when that happens, it it just gives a general climate of ease and grace from the starry perspective, okay? While there aren't as many sweet aspects compared to the salty ones in April as there are in March, it is notable, and it is notable in the year of 2021 because we only have a few months in 2021 where we have more sweet aspects than salty ones, and this is one of those months. We want to capitalize on that. The second thing that I love about this month is that we don't have any personal planet retrogrades. And this is actually makes this month a little bit better even than March because in March we had the post retrograde Mercury, you know, sh uh, shadow transit for half of March. So it wasn't like till the second half of March that really the clarity started to come back, that, you know, things started to really move along as far as momentum and certainty. But now for the whole month of April, restored optimism, um, clarity about the direction ahead, being able to see more than one step ahead of us. If things aren't happening this month, then the capacity to see a little bit further to, to make some plans, and also more energy, more vibrance um, for taking on whatever has to be dealt with. When we had the confusion of the retrograde and at the end of January, all of February, and the first half of March, it, it just lends itself to everything that was sure being thrown up into question. And now things are starting to gel a little bit more um, this month. Now there will be surprises and I will talk about that at, um, at the end and give you some details at the end of the month. But this is still one of the, the months of the year where we can have more clarity and direction and make more plans. In general, this is one of my favorite months of the whole year for launches, for big decisions, for engagements, for weddings, for you know negotiating contracts, for buying a house, for selling a house, for making big purchases. If you have to make a big purchase of any kind, this is a really great month for things like that. You just wanna make sure you don't go too crazy because all the Aries energies will be so robust and rambunctious, one could get a little carried away. So just kind of watch it there with your spendiness. But if you if you really need to make some big purchases, then go ahead and do it. Now, your home sector has been featured in a very prominent way. And so you might have had certain things in your home space gelling in a big way or pressure being put on your home space in a big way. And likely both of those things are happening at once. So you might see like great progress going on in your home space, or you might see heaviness and uncertainty in like something with your family. Like maybe there's a sick family member, but then you know your house is getting all fixed up. Or maybe it's opposite. Maybe your family is doing really well and your relationships are really good, but then something's going on with your housing situation. Because of the energy of Saturn and Jupiter kind of dueling here, there's the energy of expansion, but there's also the energy of restriction, and those could come up in the same parts of your life, in the home and housing and real estate and family sector, or in different divisions, okay? But it is 
very much bringing home and family into focus and that is going to continue. Okay, so some things really to celebrate for um, Scorpio is that one is that your creativity is going to continue to soar. March really opened this up for you, starting from the end of February, March, and into the beginning of April. You've got some really great support for your creative efforts. If you've had some projects that you're trying to get done, if you've had some things that education that you've needed for expanding your creativity, those things in February, March, and April, like especially the beginning, are really, really um, going to soar. And you might notice that even throughout April that that continues, okay? So that's something definitely to celebrate. Something else to celebrate is that there's going to be more chance that you can what I call eighth house it, okay? So the energy of the eighth house is other people's money, and you know this house if you know Scorpio because Scorpio rules the eighth house. It's other people's money, you know, shared resources, um, support coming from other places. So when I say this term eighth house it, it, there might be some things in your life that aren't quite gelling right now, whether it's your finances or whether it's something else that you're working on, but your eighth house is going to be very prominent and possibly give you some really major solutions. Like let's say you're having a, a rough money spot. Well, your family or your spouse or a random person could bring money. Let's say you like have a high tax bill and you're like, oh no, there could be some kind of tax relief or you could win money or you could get a grant or funding. Like the odds of money coming out of a strange, like surprising place are increased at this time. So if you need money and you don't have it on your own, you might be able to eighth house it. Another way you might be able to eighth house it is again, like through support of a project that you have. Let's say you're trying to buy a house and you're having trouble getting a loan. Someone might co-sign for you or something might happen where that support comes in. There are a million examples of what this could look like, but this energy of the eighth house is gonna be very, very prominent and that's now and for some time to come. So just kind of, Rework your brain around stretching out to different possibilities. If you're trying to do something and it's not working, then just kind of look to see how other people's support could help to make this happen for you. Okay, so that's something to celebrate. Also collaborations and sharing partnership, like energies and your partnerships. There's a lot of um, help that can come from there. Now at the same time as that's happening, there also might be some adversarial energies or feeling like you're pulled in two different directions. There are a lot of things going on for Scorpio now for your personal expansion and your, 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 your personal goals. But then there's an equal amount of your relationships or your family or something else that's pulling you away from your personal goals. Now, there might be some cases where your personal goals are in sync with a family member or a, a key person and then you're working together and you're getting a lot of stuff done. And you know, so th there, there's something to this like antagonism or adversarial nature or a combined synergistic energy. There's just a ton of energy around key people in your life, you know, bringing challenges or bringing support. And that that's comes through in a lot of different ways through your chart. This is a time definitely for Scorpio to ask some serious questions about your health, okay? If you don't have anything in your health going on, that's great. But there are very likely certain things that you are getting away with that you could be doing better, and this is actually a time to take some action on that. So let's say you're not sleeping well, or you're not managing stress very well, or you've got some bad habits through addictions or, or food, or you know not, not taking care of yourself in one way or another. This is a period of time when your health is really being thrown into the spotlight and it wants some focus, okay? But the good news about that is that you will likely have more motivation to do something about it. So the odds of you taking on an exercise program, you know, having, you know, consulting with someone who can help you, you're just having a lot of focus there. And so you have the ambition, you have more clarity and the people to help can actually show up. And ultimately what you really are in need of, very likely, is some systems, a system for stress management, a system for organization, a system for your, you know, how your daily life looks, a system for your diet, something where it kind of takes some of the guesswork out of it because there's a system and this is what you do and then it's like 
you just do that and then you can go back and deal with all your creative stuff and this you know stuff with the relationships and things that are coming up okay so when the planets are in Aries it gives us a lot of motivation now remember that Aries is ruled by Mars and Mars also co-rules Scorpio so there's a lot of sort of tying in similarities between the energy of Aries and the energy of Scorpio even though they have their very different pieces too so this is a time when it's like fire gets put under your watery pot to come to a boil and that's for better or worse so certain things could be irking you or aggravating you and that could be irking you into action which again which would be very um kind of a way to make lemonade where it's like you get fed up enough that you do something about it this is an amazing time to do something as long as the energy isn't done in anger or it's not aggressive action you know towards someone else that is not in the right place. You have to make sure that you're in the right mindset before you take an action and it's not just coming from anger. The anger could be the motivation to look at something, but we just wanna make sure that you know, you're know you putting, you're going on a path um, that has a positive focus for yourself rather than a negative focus for somebody else. All right, so that, that's coming up in your chart as well. So as the planets move, the second half of April starts to get more into the Taurus sector. Um, and then, it, so Mercury, um, Venus, and then the Sun are all going to move into Taurus. At this time of year, every year for Scorpio, that means these planets start to make what's called an opposition. An opposition is when, well, it's basically this, 180 degrees apart. And I've already alluded to some of these energies, but I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit more detail. So sometimes we have to have something that we're doing tested, or we have to have a devil's advocate, or we have to have something that is making, is testing a theory or testing a practice. So you're going to have that going on, all right? And this, and this probably happens at this time of year in some form or fashion when, when the planets start to get into Taurus. Also, it could just be that you are taking action on ideas that you had and you're putting it into process. So this can be a very, very, very productive time for Scorpios, for everybody, but especially because of this opposition. It, it comes through pressure though. You don't have to fear it. Just know that the pressure is going to be on and you are also going to have the energy to rise to meet your destiny or whatever else is calling here. Okay, let's see. This might be a very important time for delegation, and that might be where this partner energy is coming up in a big way. So if you're finding that you're overwhelmed and you can't manage everything, or that your energy really needs to be put towards things only you can do, you might start to make a list of the things that, that you have to do that only you can do, and start to look at some of the things that really maybe somebody else can do, and start figuring out some way to get those people to do that, whether it's an accountant. You know, if you don't have an accountant, it might be a great time to have an accountant because there's all of these tax changes that might be going into place. There's all of, you know, all of this stuff going on with the COVID relief and things like that. Like that's just an example of a place where you might try to do it on your own, but if you spend just a little bit of money, you might wind up getting a big help. So money or energy or exchange put towards somebody else helping you with something might go very, very, very far at this time. Something else about the planets opposing your placement is that at the end of April, so there will be three conjunctions with the planet Uranus. First Venus, then Mercury, then the Sun. Uranus is the planet of surprises. It's the planet of rapid change and massive, you know, inspiration and breakthroughs. And for those of you who are like Halloween babies or close to Halloween, you know, the last days of October, the beginning days of November, or if you're watching for your moon or, or rising or other, you know, Venus or Mars or other Scorpio placement, and you have a placement close to 10 degrees, then this sequence of Uranus conjunctions is going to more likely be very, very, very pronounced for you. Now, everyone in the Zodiac and every Scorpio in particular, because, you know, is likely going to feel these surprises, 
but then we'll drill down like so anyone in the zodiac can feel it right but then tauruses are going to have it in opposition so that i mean that's the energetics are in opposition to your energy but then those of you at the end of october beginning of november or close to 10 degrees is going to be more direct and more pronounced for you and these surprises could be amazing like money coming out of nowhere sudden fame sudden accomplishment or it could be jostling to your love or money or health or you know, unwelcome surprises. So it's just a time of major intensity because the planet Uranus is moving in opposition for you. Um, but that's going to be aspected even more so in the last 10 days around of April. So just try to be well rested, you know, if you can. You know, insomnia is going to, to come into a, a lot of play here. But, you know, just try to be ready to deal with surprises because they're very likely going to come, especially for those of you in that um, time frame or degree group. Okay, something else that's very notable um, this month is that we have a full moon in your sign. So we generally only get one full moon in our sign each year. Sometimes, um, you know, sometimes there's two, but that's more rare. But this, this year you've got one full moon in Scorpio at seven degrees and it's going to be on April 26th. You'll feel it in the days around that. And it's going to be very intense. It's going to bring relationships in, a lot of the similar themes that we've been talking about. Um, and certain things will come to light. Mysteries could come to light. You know, hidden information could come to light. Drama or accomplishment or fulfillment, you know, with relationships or shared resources could come. And, but in general, it's really a power time for you. It's a time, I call it a time for reveal and release, all right? And reveal and release is where we ask, as there's a problem or something that we're trying to accomplish, for whatever the obstacle is or whatever the solution is to be revealed and for whatever the, the, the block is to be released. So really, really be thinking about this as you, you know, are leading up to the days around April 26th. What is it that really needs to be released from your patterns, from your, your thoughts, your, your thought matrix? Like, what has to be released? And then try to put some energy towards, or a plan, again, a system in place for at the end of the month, releasing this, whatever it is. Maybe you have to forgive somebody. Maybe you have to forgive yourself. Maybe there's something that you believe that's causing you a bunch of problems. You might believe something about life or about the world or about someone else, and that is causing you grief. So something else that could be helpful for you this month is for you to write a list or try to really look at, and maybe you might have to have somebody close to you kind of, you know, be an objective eye to help you with this, but help you with where is something that you believe causing you to have experiences that are negative for you, and how can you do something different with that? So it could be very, very, very empowering. It also can bring water where it shouldn't be. Whenever we have full moons in a water sign, especially if that water sign is your sign, you know, pipes bursting, um, flooding, water events, you know, something, just be extra careful around water. Make sure your insurance for flooding, like go over all of that stuff before this time. If you're gonna be traveling somewhere where there's a lot of water, just tune into the weather, things like that around this time could be of special note for you to pay attention to. But in general, you know, there are, um, you're gonna have to work hard this month. Um, but because there's so much sweet energy in the, in the cosmos, it really, really, really can help you be productive and get to reach your goals. Now there's something very important about the energy of the beetle that I wanna talk about, okay? The beetle, according to Ted Andrews, talks about making necessary decisions for goals. And you might notice, and this will be a, a, a confirmation to you, if you start seeing beetles around, or a beetle makes itself known to you in a prominent way, there could be like a synchronicity to go along with what I'm telling you that you might have to make a decision about something and that you have to take action on that. But again, the good news is that this is a month for action, but there might be something looming in certain areas, a certain area of your life or more than one where the beetle will come or something else will come and say, you actually have to make a necessary decision. Now, something that's inherent in the energy of beetle time, which this is for you, is that if you make a decision, you'll know in a short amount of time if you have to correct that decision or go on a different course or do something different. 
but you are going to actually have to take action. And if you're not completely sure, you might wanna make a mini action and then kinda of test the waters. Or if you really, really can't make a decision, then just don't put your goals away. Just keep watching for your moment, okay? Because your moment to strike might be coming and either it will come from inside of you, like you'll have a knowing, or it could be promoted from the outside that somebody makes you make a decision about something and it comes to that. So be looking out for the beetle. Okay, so let's see. I think I covered everything. Yeah, so I hope that this month is super productive for you. I'm pretty sure it will be. Know that you're going to have to work hard, but you can accomplish a lot. Know that there are going to be a lot of new beginnings, a ton of zest, a ton of support for everything you're trying to do. Look to your partnerships and, for, and to other resources to support you with your personal goals or your shared goals. And definitely get your diagnostics for your health if you have any weird symptoms or anything like that. This is a, a fantastic month for clarity and possibly forward movement on a health topic. The last thing that I want to talk about has to do with the eclipses. So something about this month that is very noteworthy is that although the eclipses aren't until May and June, and I will do a full, you know, discussion about where the eclipses are hitting for, you know, in those months for you, but we're entering eclipse season as we progress into April, four to six weeks before the actual eclipse. So the, eclipse, the first eclipse is May 26th, so like mid to end of April, we're starting to get into eclipse season. And so that means the chance for radical changes, you know, dramatic endings, blissful new beginnings, you know, a lot of intensity, uh, a lot of crossroads, that energy is coming again. And so you will have seen the storylines coming up mid 2020, the end of 2020 again, at the beginning of 2021, and then now again, because as the eclipses come into the forefront, it's bringing the storylines that are running through mid-2020 to the beginning of 2022, and this is a hot spot for that. So anything that sort of was coming up as a theme then, and then came up again, and now it's going to come up again, and then you'll have the final chapters at the end of this year, there's something very important in process for you, and, you know, it's going to come back, and you'll know it when it comes, you know. You also might feel changes about to come um, and not be able to put your finger on it. And I just want to kind of affirm that those feelings that you have are probably related to the eclipses and possibly these Uranus transits, but that, you know, change is definitely coming. So hopefully that will be a really good thing for you. I know I've given you a lot of information, but if you would like even more information on what's going on in the stars and what you can expect, then definitely utilize all of my free resources. You can click under this video on the more button with the little arrow and it will reveal all of these links that take you to all of these different resources that I have. You'll definitely want to go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter. It's positioned right there on the front page. It'll say Dear Friend and it'll have a space for your um, name and email address and you'll get my sweet and salty list including a detailed write-up of the month one month early delivered into your inbox plus other goodies you'll also get access to my 2021 happy scopes which gives you an overview of each month of 2021 so you get a super sneak peek in all into all of the months um, ahead for 2021 and what to celebrate what to watch out for and how you can make lemonade in situations where there are some lemons um, you can also get my Shine, my 28-day virtual coaching program for free when you sign up for my free email newsletter. So I give lots of goodies to my email community and you can become a part of that by going to AnnieHelpsYou.com and signing up there. If you want written horoscopes one month early, written by me and then also other lifestyle blogs, then you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com and check out all the goodies there. It's a beautiful, beautiful site. It's worth a peek just to check out how pretty it is. And there's lots of great information for your astrology kissed life. If you want to have some free courses, you can go to my school, Luminous Life Multiversity at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. You can see my free courses there, including Unleash Your Money Magnet if you're trying to work on manifesting more, more money. And you can also see my paid courses there, including my crazy in-depth Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course that will prepare you to do whatever you'd like to do with astrology, whether it's for your own self-development, 
helping your family and friends, or actually doing astrology as all are part of your profession. Also check out my new book, Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe, which you can find anywhere and everywhere. It's actually in the physical locations of every Barnes and Noble and Books A Million in the United States and in many stores abroad and everywhere online. And you can also see my other book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life in the World in 28 Days. And you can find that anywhere online as well. So I hope you have a wonderful month. Make sure you look at all the resources underneath the video. Click the more button and I'll see you next month. Bye.